Hello, this is James Howell of Helm Enterprises Grinding Division in the head, world headquarters just south of San Antonio, Texas. A uh, while back I shot a video showing how I was making Kydex shoes for my mid-tech Tomahawks. And that was kind of the stupid way of doing it. So since then I've figured out better how to set it up and I was going to show you the updated process. So I'll be starting with a 10 by 6 sheet of Kydex and I'll be molding it into the sheath to fit this 15 inch record. Go. Okay, the tooling that I'm using is similar to what I did in the old video, but I've combined several pieces. So we've actually got three piece tooling right now. You've got the feed lip form that raises up, makes the uh, feed lips to help get the uh, tomahawk up into the sheath actually overlaps on the trim form and then you have this piece that surrounds it that just keeps the kydex from folding over the edges so that the um, when you trim it with the router it'll trim cleanly so this piece is the important part because it combines several pieces of tooling from what I was doing before into a single piece so it lets me mold the shape of the kydex and also drill my holes, shape my slots, and trim the whole profile of one half of the sheath, all with one piece of tooling. Okay, for heat right now I'm using a cheap toaster oven, get a Walmart. Um, this thing is not particularly reliable on holding the correct temperature, so before I throw a piece of kydex in that I'm actually using, I'll put in a test piece and make sure that when it's at temperature, it's not melting. You can see it's shiny and it's it's got the shape of the uh, grill from the toaster oven in it. So, some point down the road, hopefully before too long, I'm actually going to invest in getting a t-shirt press to heat the kydex from both sides. It's a clamshell design and it has a digital controller, should be a lot more accurate. Um, I've come across people on YouTube using them. It seems to be the go-to piece of equipment to heat Kydex consistently and accurately. So in the meantime, I'm hobbling along with a cheap little toaster oven, but that's not a permanent measure. So I've already tested it. Um, I know that it's not gonna melt my Kydex. So I'm gonna throw that in. I'm gonna use my timer on my phone um, I'm going to heat it for at least a minute, not more than two. I'm going to check it after a minute and see how soft the Kydex has gotten. Big thing is I don't want to melt the Kydex. Let's see. We're going. Needs to be a little bit softer. Something. Go. Okay, as before, I'm using my hydraulic press to squish the kydex, and that's a lot of room for it to travel. So I'm going to go ahead and fire it up while I'm waiting for it to heat. And I'm going to bring it down closer so it's quicker to press it at the end. Um, eventually, I do have plans for other forms of kydex press than using a 42 ton hydraulic press, but um, those are down the road in the meantime. I'm using this on my uh, Tomahawk shoes. For other shoes, I use a more regular Kydex press, but there will be more improvements down the road on the, sh on the Kydex too. So, so we'll bring it on down. Okay, it's been a little over a minute, so I'm gonna check See how floppity the kydex is? Nope, it's still too stiff. So we'll let it heat a little longer. Maybe bump the temperature up a little bit. Uh, the reason I want to replace my toaster oven here is that if you have it set on say 300 degrees, one time that might be too cool, the next time it might be melting your kydex. It is inconsistent, so we need to uh, upgrade to make it 
easier to work with. Good. Okay, I've got a piece of a thick MDF and some Kydex foam that I'm going to set on top. So I made sure I had enough clearance that I can slip that in pretty quick whenever the Kydex is up to temperature. Uh, I do want to point out that we did not go from a cold toaster oven. We had already preheated it. So you can see how much the temperature is varying even though we have not bumped the uh, temperature setting. So for, for what we're doing, the toaster oven is not appropriate. The size is good, it's just not consistent in holding it. Uh, let's see. Yep, that's soft enough. We'll come over here, get it in position. that sit for about two minutes before I pop it up and take it out. Uh, I'll actually go ahead and put the other half of Kydex in and part way through and go ahead and swap around. Uh, the surround piece that goes around the outside of the uh, main trim uh, template that keeps the Kydex from folding over the edges actually works on both halves. You just flip it over. Yeah. Boom. All right, it's time to swap out to the other side. So I'm going to load this one, start the timer, and swap the two in. Hold on, you're going around. Okay, so I'll take out the feed lip piece and the trim bit. You can see how they interlock with each other, but the uh, feed ramp, they interlock, but the feed ramp actually overlaps onto the trim bit. So I'll get those separated there. Now I'll set that here out of the way for the moment and Flip over the surrounding piece on the other side, slip in the trim template, slip in the feed lip form, and bam, I'm ready to do the next one as soon as it's hot enough. Okay, film this. I am. So it's been in there over a minute and it hasn't softened at all. It should be floppity and ready to go. Mm. Uh, once again, next major purchase I make needs to be a t-shirt press to be able to heat it better. That's because the ambient temperature in here is 100 degrees. <laughs> That's just normal. Okay. So. All right, it's finally come up to temperature. So now we're doing the second half. Got it in place. Mm -hmm. And we'll give that a minute or so to cool, take it out. We'll have two pieces right, molded and ready to go. In the meantime, we're going to work with that first one. Go. All right, we've got our molded Kydex half. Still on top of the um, trim template. See, so we've got all the holes, got the slots. So what we're going to do is take a drill, appropriately sized, this is a quarter inch drill bit. We're gonna drill out just the corner holes and go ahead and bolt them in place. You can see that I'm using these long uh, nuts standoff nuts because they're long enough that you can get a good grip on them but they don't stick out past the um, template like wing nuts would. So we got one. I'm 
sometimes it needs a little persuasion to go in. Two. I'll tighten these all the way after I have them all drilled and pinned in place. Standoffs hold the kydex up off the sacrificial piece of plywood here, and I can drill through while it's sitting nice and level. So I'll go ahead and drill the rest of my holes. Out here where it's the long stretch without support, I'll just hold the kydex up with my hand. case I'm using a smaller bit. It is slightly larger than the Dremel bit we're going to use to shape the slots. So go ahead and pre-drill them. Okay. All the holes are drilled or pre-drilled. Okay, so the pre-drilled holes are slightly larger than the router bit on the uh, Dremel. And I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to fit it over the, the hole. The bare shaft, the untoothed shaft of the router bit is going to ride on the inside of the slot. And that will let me trim out a neat, consistent slot. <laughs> the deck of the router going clean of debris. So I would bet you that was under a minute. I've got four slots cleanly and consistently routed out. Okay, the Dremel router table is built to be permanently attached onto a table. Well, I don't have that much table space to be able to dedicate a permanent spot for it. So I just stuck it on a piece of 2 before, which I can clamp in my vise when I need it, and then when I'm not needing it, just undo the vise and it goes down on the shelf underneath. And I can set it back up in, you know, 10 seconds. Ready, go. All right, I'm gonna go to my little tabletop bandsaw here and I'm gonna try to trim quickly some of the excess off so that it's uh, not sticking out wider than the width of the router bit that I'm gonna to use to do the real trimming with. And I'll explain why here in a moment when we get over to the router. Just going to point out, it's not easy to get up in here 
so I'm not going to be able to get that close. So I'm just going to do a quick cut across and take the worst of it off. Up here, it's easier to do. So I'll just trim some of that extra and go right to the trash can with it. So, so yeah, I took some of the extra off. I didn't try to get too close. I didn't need to. Okay, if you haven't watched my video on shaping the tomahawk handle slabs, or you don't have it memorized, why not? Stop watching this video, open another tab, watch that video until you have it memorized, and then come back. I used to be a teacher. Okay. <laughs> The process is going to be fairly similar in trimming the um, Kydex piece as it was with trimming the Tarot Tough piece, but I'm using a different bit. Good. With the handle jigs, I had a bit, router bit, trim bit with the bearing on top so it would ride on the jig and it would trim the piece that was on the bottom. Well, you can't really do that with this three-dimensional surface of the um, sheath half. So, I'm using, instead of one with the bearing on top, I'm using one with the bearing on bottom. Because the piece that we're trimming is on top of the jig instead of underneath it. So, I'm going to swap out the bit and set the correct height where it will cutting edge will be deep enough to cover all the kydex and the bearing will still be able to ride against the steel. There is available um, bear, uh, router bits that have bearings at the bottom and the top so you adjust your router up and down but they're about 30 bucks and you can get a new router for about 60 so instead of getting one of those I'm probably just gonna get another router sometime down the road and run one with this trim bit and run the other one with this trim bit. So. Go. Okay, you can see that my trim bit has some scrap pieces of quarter inch thick MDF glued to the bottom. That is to give clearance to the bolt heads. So as I'm sitting here running on the table, it rides smoothly instead of being all bumpy where the bolt heads are. Um, I've adjusted my height. I've got my safety glasses here. Or internet bugs you about it. No, I might use safety glasses with the router anyway. I like my eyes being able to see. Don't worry, we'll pay the cat tax too. I've got my vacuum cleaner, and now before we crank it up, I'll explain why I trimmed. You'll notice when we're shooting the video that anywhere that the kydex, the material sticking out and being trimmed, is narrower than the width of the bit. It's smooth and easy to, to control. Anywhere that the material being trimmed is wider than the width of the bit, it tends to grab it and try to throw it. So I've got to be careful when I get around over into this part. So anywhere that I can easily trim it, it makes the, with the bandsaw, it makes trimming the rest of it with the router quicker and easier and safer. So that's why I take the time to buzz it on the bandsaw real quick. Alright, vacuum cleaner, router, trim jig, let's do it.
and easy. It takes longer to drill the holes and bolt stuff up than it does to actually trim to shape. Okay, the sheath tooling is all designed in CAD, uh, computer aided design program. It's in water jet cut and pieced together here at the shop. This is the same shape as the tomahawk head, but it is an eighth inch thick, half the thickness of the stock that I use for the tomahawks, which is quarter inch. So each half put together is a quarter inch thick across and lets you hold the uh, tomahawk head very securely. You see that they're, it's designed in 2D CAD, but when it goes together, it overlaps. The piece of MDF here that makes the feed lips it has a 45 degree bevel on it to make the ramp. Um, I actually cut a piece of steel in this shape with water jetting that I then used to bolt onto and use as a form to route my edge and give it the feed lip shape. So this way it's not as fast as if you know each piece is already pre-cut and you just mold it on without having to trim everything but it's faster and more consistent than trying to do each one the old stupid way that I was doing or trying to do molding around each one as a one-off each tomahawk as a one-off sheath because things are standardized I'm able to build tooling that'll work and let me build standardized sheaths so it's kind of a in between the real high-tech stuff and the lower stuff and it works pretty well okay so when you pull it off the trim jig there is a little bit more trimming to do with a disposable razor blade. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Clean up especially along the slots. That makes sure all the holes are cleaned well so it sits flat. Side of the corners to make it easier to unsheath. Go. Okay, I did the cleanup that I needed to on the inside, so now it's ready to rivet. And whenever I put these together, I like the sheaths to be completely ambidextrous, so I actually alternate the directions that the rivets go. So it doesn't matter which side you hang the tomahawk on, um, the rivet heads are going to be alternating e evenly. So. Okay. Go. Okay, you can see rivets are alternating. Um, I'm going to use my drill press to actually set my rivets because I had been using my little half ton arbor press over there and I was having trouble all of a sudden with all my rivets splitting and I finally tracked it down to the fact that the arbor press was not lowering down smoothly it would get down to the end and it would kind of jog so I could still use it to flare the rivets on my um, tomahawk handles knife handles but now I chuck up the flaring dies and my milling machine drill press and I flare them. So I make sure everything's lined up good. And bam. And I'll do all of one side and then flip the sheath over and do all of the other side. Last one split. <laughs> so I'll pull that one out. Um, it's together now. Once I have that split rivet replaced, then I will go ahead and tweak it. I'll need to put the tomahawk in there and spot heat with the heat gun 
and work it until I get it where it will uh, withdraw the tomahawk easily, but I can sit there and shake it and it won't come out. And I'll demonstrate that when I'm done. Go. So having done a little bit of tweaking with the heat gun, it is now ready for me to add the retention strap and whatever carry hardware the customer wants. Pops down, point of the beard first, feeds back into the feed lips, and pops into place. Ready to go. So, thanks for watching. Stick around, we'll have more neat videos later on. Three kittens. Put there so cute.